One of the big points about storable payments is that you no longer need to have an external virtual terminal. So all credit card payments, reconciling and refunds are going to be handled within SiteLink and specifically SiteLink MyHub. I'm going to be using a demo account along with an, an internal presentation tool because I obviously don't want to show uh, any customer data as I'm going through this presentation. So one thing right off the bat that's important to know is that you need to, or anyone in your organization that, that wants to um, look at reconciling and some of the tools that I'm going to mention, they need to have access to MyHub to see this. So I'm at MyHub right now. MyHub is our browser-based version of SiteLink. So you can go to myhub.sitelink.com to see this, and you're going to log into the corporate control center side and I'm in one of my demo databases here. So it's your corporate code, your username, and your password. Again, you need to have access to MyHub to see these features that I'm referring to. So we're going to log in. And the first thing we're going to uh, talk about is in the payment section here. As a storable payments client or user, you're going to see some new functionality here in the payment side. Specifically, we're going to talk about transactions. That's the first button we're going to click on. When we're in the transaction screen, we're going to see different columns now, and I'll go through each of these items. The first one is that you can search for any last four uh, digits of a credit card. So for example, I happen to see a payment method here where the last four is 5855. But let's just say I didn't I didn't know that number. If I typed in 5855, if a customer called in was inquiring, I could click apply here and see the payment method of 5855 for this time time range. I'm going to take this out and go back to the default view. When you're looking at the start date and end date, this is going to be defaulted to up to and including the current day of this respective month. So today doing this presentation is June 29th. We're looking at data from June 1st to June 29th. Now we can change that time frame by clicking on the different calendar options here. But by default, you're going to be looking at the calendar view from the first of the month that you're in until the day that you're in right now. So again, for this particular presentation, we're going from June 1st to June 29th, we're looking at all the payments on this list for this respective month. The default view is all of your facilities. So if you have more than one facility, we're going to see all of those credit card payments for all of your sites, but you could choose a respective site. Now in this particular demo, we only have one location. It's location two, but if you had location one, two, three, however many locations you have, you could click on each location here, click apply. And then again, you'd be looking at the credit card payments within this respective period for that one location. There's an export button here at the top. You click export and you'll be able to see an XLSX file, an Excel file that shows all that data. So let's bring that up. So there's the date of the transactions, the facility that we're looking at or facilities, the cardholder name, the payment type, the last four, of the, each respective credit card, the transaction amount, did it go up, was there a refund, could it have been a negative amount, what was the status? And I'm gonna go over the transaction statuses in a moment and what they mean. Then we have transaction type. If there was a refund, you'll notice some of these transactions have this negative amount. It's going to show the refund payment uh, transaction ID. Let's scroll over. Then we have our transaction ID and then our authorization code. So there's some, there's definitely some data that you can see by exporting uh, that report. The main view, we see our facility location, when the payment happened along with the time, who was paid by, the payment method, the processing amount, and then the status. So what are the different status options um, that you could have? Number one, if it didn't go through, we would see failed right here. It is important to note, um, and I'm going to I'm going to talk about all, all of the different payment uh, statuses, but it's very important to note, and I want you to keep this in the back of your mind, um, that credit cards are batched slash closed daily at 9:30 p.m. Eastern time. And I'm going to and I'm going to say that um, a couple times throughout this presentation. So 
let's just say that you happen to be a customer in California and, and I'm going to go through a scenario with you. Now, when we're looking at all these payments, these payments are from midnight to midnight from, from this calendar date. But if we took a payment and we're in California at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, if that goes through, immediately it would say approved. The payment has been initiated at the time of the payment and it would be there immediately. At 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the same day, the payment and all all other transactions that have taken place since 9.30 p.m. Eastern Tuesday, the previous day, would now show as captured. So again, the 9.30 to 9.30 time frame. Settled, so on the next day in this example, on Thursday, at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, the deposit that holds these transactions is created and is processing. The payment status moves to settled, and then the morning of Friday, the deposit that holds these transactions is processed and the funds are sent to your bank. So again, if your payment didn't go through, it's failed. Immediately when you take the payment is approved at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on the same day, that is now captured. And then the following day at 6 p.m. Eastern, it's settled. So when I talk about being captured status at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, if you happen to be in California, that's 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you're in a different time zone, again, it's based on your respective time zone when that captured status happens. Now we're going to talk about deposits and fees. I'm going to go into our little presentation tool here, uh, but you would again see this in your MyHub. Now, the, the next uh, section, deposits and fees, breaks down the total credit card sales, refunds, chargebacks, and fees that make up the net deposit. Now here is, here is a very big point that I wanna make. We are now able to tell you with storable payments the exact amount of money that's going to hit your bank, including refunds, chargebacks, et cetera. We weren't able to do this before with other um, third-party integrations or with, or with our different payment off offerings in the past. So this is very, very useful and important for those that are in, in, in the accounting world, that are, that are um, people that would deal with reconciliation, is very important and that was something that people potentially struggled with in the past. The basic premise being, you're telling me I'm taking in so much money, I want to see that money, quote unquote, hit my bank. And in the past, sometimes with a chargeback, um, with refunds, with other things, that could be a struggle or a challenge uh, for people that are reconciling. So with storable payments, with that 9.30 to 9.30 timeframe, when you see a de deposit amount in this particular screen, the deposits and fees section, you are going to see that in your bank account. So for a lot of accounting um, type people, that's going to be a huge um, relief. So again, the deposits that we see here on this list are um, containing credit card activity that took place between 9.30 p.m. Eastern one day and 9.30 p.m. Eastern the next. So for example, when we see on November 2nd, an amount that's deposited of 6120, that is the amount that you're going to see in your bank. And I'm gonna break that down a little bit more, but when we see our start and end date again, we will have that June 1st to June um, 29th, and we can change that date. We could also see all facilities or pick and choose by facility. And then we have that, that export option again. So in this particular example, for one of our sites, location 101 in this case, you'll notice on November 2, we have multiple locations. So this particular um, test site has, has several locations. We're seeing the deposit for each location here. So when we see a deposit for location 101, of six six thousand one hundred and twenty. If I click on view on the right, what we're seeing here is that the date of November second for this location, and then there's our bank. We actually took in six thousand three hundred and eighty-five dollars from that nine thirty to nine thirty time frame. We had some refunds. We had some chargebacks. We had some items that were being reduced from that total amount of payments. The net amount that we're going to see is 6120. So again, if we go back to that deposit and fee section, we're looking for 6,120 in our bank. 
and that's what we're going to see so we can check that box that's that's in fact uh, what we took in but as we go a little deeper the total payments were 6385 but because in this scenario we had some refunds charged back you, you don't necessarily you're not necessarily going to have that every day but if you did you're going to see that here and then see your your net amount as we scroll down you see all of those transactions listed in detail the positives making it go up in terms of the payments and then the negatives again refunds chargebacks and, and and other situations that could be reducing it will show here again we can export that when we go back to deposits and fees there's a fee section here on the right now the fees are monthly fees so the total amount of fees that we have for the credit cards throughout the month are going to quote unquote hit on the first so for example location 101 all of the fees that that uh, in terms of the, the merchant processing fees that happened during October are going to be on your November um, first it's going to you're going to show it in this account on no, November 1st um, November in this particular example so if it was July, uh, June payments that were coming in on July 1st we would see that here then it takes uh, on the 5th it's going to be debited from your account. So you see it here on the first, but it's actually going to come out of your account as an ACH transaction on the fifth, and that's going to take um, three, three to five days to process. So again, I want to reiterate, the transactions tab is showing you the payments that happen for that calendar period, and we can see our different statuses, approved, captured, settled. Our deposits and fees, not that one section is more important than the other, but deposits of fees is something I really want to highlight because that's where the person that's in charge of reconciling can see, yes, site link or storable payments says that we took an X amount for this time period. This is what I should see in my bank. You can now see that actual amount and have a lot of confidence uh, in the reporting.